Hey everyone, hope you're having a good day. My name's Andy, my channel's Finding Value. Uh, today we're gonna dive in and look at Twitter, see what's going on with market sentiment, see what people are talking about. Uh, I'll interject my opinion in there, let you guys know what I think uh, is going on as well and give further uh, information as we read through these posts together. And this is all commodity related uh, and stock market related. So uh, if you guys like this type of content, definitely don't forget to give the thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. So let's let's dive in here. Uh, if you guys want to add me on uh, Twitter, it is at finding underscore finance uh, if you want to add me. So it says, Cuppy, yes, oil is what will blow up your CUSIPs, not Credit Suisse. Guys should have spent the weekend on their oil vigilante memes. It says oil has a bigger systemic risk than Credit Suisse. I agree with that. We've, we've seen the oil markets blow up uh, Europe. Uh, they're, they're causing problems with their high energy prices. In, in Germany, they're shutting production down. They are probably going to have to ration uh, energy this winter. Uh, we're also seeing problems in England's bond market, the gilt. Uh, it is crashing. And they've stepped into the markets. They have purchased their bonds to cease that, that selling pressure, to basically stop the selling pressure. So large pension funds and all these other people who hold um, bonds don't go underwater. So uh, oil and energy is the root cause of all of those things. And I think that's why Powell is probably increasing interest rates as fast uh, as he is. And that's why they released energy from the Strategic Petroleum Reserve release. They're trying to ease the pressure of inflation around the world in terms of energy. Remember, it's not the increase in credit supply, this is the energy is the factor that, that, that translates dollars into the consumer price index. It's housing prices is the majority of it and energy costs and food, but energy touches everything. Uh, here's one, this was kind of cool. It says the West Germany's government government's forecast for energy mix from 1974 before it was hijacked by the irrational fear of nuclear power. Uh, so what they thought was going to happen was we had a large build out of oil, natural gas, and coal, and eventually, uh, after you know the the two thousand you know twenty twenty era where we're at today, we would see a large ramp of nuclear power, sun, water, and miscellaneous, and natural gas and oil would get phased out because that's basically uh, the natural curve that it would project in peak oil peak peak natural gas and so forth. And by 2050, it would virtually be gone. So that's what they were envisioning. I still think that nuclear power has to be the answer based off of its mineral intensity, which is very low, and its energy returns per mineral intensity and energy returns on energy invested. Uh, so I think something like this has to happen. It's not a matter of want, it's a matter of need, and that is what is available to provide that energy source. So I think they pretty much have it nailed down. <clears throat> um, I'll skip through that. Interesting fact, uh, last time silver went up as much as today was November 2008. That was the bottom and silver went up 400% in the next two and a half years. Are we at the bottom of silver? That's the, the, the amount it went up today in terms of percent gain. And you can see in 2008, we had a similar percent gain back then. Is this the beginning of a very large move? Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to side on the answer of probably. Remember, I can't give a, a, a distinct answer because no one knows the future. But we're very low in the TYX to TNX ratio. We have inflationary pressures. We have people around the world running to the safety of physical metals, given the energy prices. Uh, the cost curves, I think, for a lot of these companies in mining will go up with energy input costs as much as they're going up. Uh, that includes natural gas, electricity, oil, etc. So I would expect physical metals to do incredibly well during this time frame. Are the mining companies going to do more or less? I'm not exactly sure on that. We'll have to find out. And we'll have to see how they react to ultra high gasoline uh, diesel prices. But I would think that their margins would get squeezed 
uh, even though uh, we see an increase in the price of the precious metals. But I also think you're going to see an increase in the price and cost of gasoline and diesel and oil. But that's that's what we're speculating on is their margins, basically, if you're in the mining companies. So here's one. It says for the first time since 1983, U.S. commercial crude storage is now higher than SPR. So here we are, and this orange lines the Strategic Petroleum Reserve, and these are uh, outside or commercial inventory. And right now they're crossing. And we have not seen that for a very long time, maybe in the 80s, when we built up the Strategic Petroleum Reserves. But that they're crossing right now, and we are drawing down our Strategic Petroleum Reserves at the fastest pace we've ever done it. So that'll be interesting this winter to see how this all plays out when the Strategic Petroleum Reserve stops releasing. I think that we're going to see increasing prices of oil, natural gas, everything energy related. We're going to see an increase in inflation. And that's kind of what my expectations are uh, coming to the end of 2022. Uh, this is the U.S. Petroleum. This is crude oil products and SPR inventories added together. You can see that we were in an increasing um environment of inventories and now we've broken that uptrend if you were to put a trend line on this and are drawing down inventories dramatically if you look at the last commodity bull market that started in 2000 and went to 2008 uh, we still basically added inventory that entire time it was a liquidity event which added liquidity to the system this here is a different this is totally different than what it was in that little mini boom. Here, we've got oil deficits, and the oil market is going to be the ape in this market. It's going gonna, it's gonna to tear some crap up. That's what's going to happen. We've broken out of the, down, the, the uptrend line. We're drawing down on inventories. We are basically trying to suppress the price through inventory releases. And when this stops, we're going to see an even dr more dramatic uh, increase, or I should say more dramatic decrease of inventories until the price goes way up and tries to kill demand. And that's going to be a very interesting uh, mix there. Coming down, it says OPEC plus plans substantial oil production cut to prop up prices. Now, I think Saudi Arabia and OPEC uh, is not happy with the strategic petroleum reserve releases with no emergency. So I think they're just playing the game. They're saying, well, if you want to add barrels to the market, we'll cut it back. We need sustained higher prices for new fields to come online. So they're also damaging the free market signals to the market to produce more, which is making this entire situation worse. So I don't know what they're trying to do. Maybe it's for election purposes. That's probably what it's for. Uh, but they're actually destroying the demand supply signals in the market to increase supply given the demand that's out there coming down yep there's another one there it says inflation will likely be a recurring problem until energy supply is structurally improved and not just in europe totally agree with that totally agree it says the oil demand is weak crowd is about to get a nasty surprise come mid-december when spr gcc and russian barrels all drop off just as gas to oil switching ramps. It's a cliff event and market is sleepwalking into a supply shock. I totally agree with that. You, when these barrels come off the market and China reopens up, Russian barrels drop off and you, you, you add all this at one shot, you could see a huge supply shock. You could see prices go dramatically higher. So it's, it's interesting how everybody just automatically says oil demand is being cut back or demand is weak it's false demand is strong and they're they're basically inventorying it over with the SPR so i'm i'm a huge bull coming up into this winter and next year for all of the energy sources especially oil and natural gas here's something it says the human brain is not wired to grasp exponentials hence not prepared for what's coming we have two possible paths forward the debt spiral unwind and the credit system collapse to zero. The credit system is saved. If so, 
we see each other in five years at $200 trillion. And this is the, the debt coming on up. And if we remain on this trajectory or path, which is an exponential increase, we are projected by 2028 to hit over 200 trillion in debt. It says 209 trillion. That, that's pretty crazy <laughs> if we were, uh, were to maintain that. Uh, coming on up, uh, we've got natural gas, the Freeport LNG restart late November. Uh, it comes back on 85% of its production in late November. Just I know we had some people ask, when is it coming back online? Uh, late November, 85%. We've got uh, breaking. It says Bank of America started to warn about the bond market. B, o B of A sees debt market slide into borderline critical zone. Investor sentiment is the worst it has been since 2008. And you know what's happening here? Um, this is blue ship. U.S. credit is having by far the worst year ever. Bond prices, in my opinion, are adjusting for a new paradigm. And I know a lot of people want their investments to go up and rocket right off the bat. What we're doing is we're going through a transition period as we speak. And what's happening is we're going into a market that is that was in a structural disinflationary environment. We ended that in 2020. Now I think what's happening is that we're going into a structurally inflationary environment and interest rates have to reflect that inflationary environment. So when I bring up all these charts about breaking down trends of, of yields and, and bond prices that are collapsing, what's happening is the world is preparing itself for a higher inflationary environment across the globe. And I think that's what Powell is recognizing, <clears throat> is that we are going to see commodity shortages, energy shortages, which will be structurally inflationary. And the, the markets right now are trying to adjust to that new paradigm, that new paradigm of <clears throat> the, the adjustment to higher inflation. And I was listening to something, Jim Bianco also made a comment about it. I completely agree with him uh, and how he stated it. And it was something on the lines of how I just stated it there. So that, that's what the market is trying to do. It's in a transition phase. And in transition phases, it is incredibly volatile. And it's not fun to, to go through a commodity bull market like that. It's just, I mean, commodities, stocks, everything is going all over the place. It's very volatile. But we're going to get out of this. People are going to find, I think, a different paradigm. They're going to switch their thought and their views. And the psychology will change. And they'll get used to an inflationary environment. And money flows will change indefinitely. Well, they'll change for a period of time, not indefinitely, but for a period of time. And companies that don't have their costs under control and don't have their, their debt under control are going to, um, they're going to go bankrupt or they're going to have problems. And that's part of the game of this shift. Uh, here, this is says, while ELF is correct that recessions always were able to bring inflation below 2%, the world was adding a lot of oil production to grow the economy to pull itself out of the recession. This is no longer true as the global oil industry has hit the Red Queen syndrome. And what we show here is the, the global estimated annual oil decline for various periods. And what this is talking about is the declines of natural production. So with the world now losing 10 plus million barrels per day of production each year, we need to find two more Guar oil fields. Uh, another Russia every single year. So these are the decline rates that we are seeing over time of million barrels per day. And the, de the decline is 10.5 million barrels per day in 2019. That means every single year in order to keep the, vo the volumes the same, not the energy returned back to uh, society, but just the volumes the same, we have to find 10 and a half million barrels to stay flat because our production is so high. Uh, and I think this is going to be tough to do. I don't think that they're going to do it for much longer. That's my opinion. Uh, in this scenario, your investment uh, paradigm shifts. Uh, in my opinion, it's going to be a world of energy scarcity, which means that energy is the investment. Money is going to have to rotate, aim itself at fixing the energy problem. And in the mix, what we're going to see is we're going to see dislocations create in the market 
where bond prices in, 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 in countries that are short on energy could have currency crises. So their currencies and their bond markets are going to eat it. And that's what we're seeing in the UK, in England. That's what we're seeing in the gilt. We're seeing oil and energy prices basically put the headlock on and the final ending move is coming up. And that could have further impacts across the globe. It's going to impact other bond markets and we could see a bond crisis. But the root of the, the, root of the problems in energy especially oil, natural gas, and it's going to extend into currencies. And that's kind of what my portfolio is roughly based around, is that type of paradigm. Uh, here, here's one, lines in Vienna, Austria to buy gold. Uh, bullion dealers in London out of gold. What's going on? So the London gold dealer uh, runs out of bullion as trust budget shocks. Bullion price in sterling came close to a record last week. Brokerages see surge in demand from British retail investors. What is happening and why I'm showing you this is that they're having a currency crisis. They're having a bond crisis. You can't put your money in bonds. You can't put your money in, in the currency. You can't put your money in stocks. Where is it going to go? And this is what I'm talking about, a, a structural shift, a paradigm change in the markets. And when people figure this out, money is going to be aimed the money flows are going to be aimed at certain investments. One of those investments is precious metals because the currencies are going to come under stress under, because of energy. And energy is the other spot that, it, that money is going to flow like no other two. So that's kind of the way that I'm viewing this. It's, it's a protect your wealth in physical metals and, and go for the, we'll call it the home run plays in energy. I think that Uranium, you know, nuclear is going to have to be something that we adopt in ever greater quantities. I think we're going to run natural gas on o overtime to cover all the renewables and the mistakes of putting as much renewables in there because the transition fuels natural gas. And then oil is going to cover all the deficits that natural gas has. So we're going to see natural gas to oil switching. And that is not projected in any of these demand. We are going to see a, a, I think a huge energy crunch very, very soon. And Powell needs to get these rates way up. He needs to try to kill whatever he can. He, he needs to get it to a real rates so we can protect the dollar and we don't have a bond crisis. It's coming. It's coming. We've got um, right across Europe, inflation is getting out of control. There must be sheer panic behind the scenes now. Last time the periphery was rotten and needed bailing out. Uh, contagion is likely. This is Germany inflation rate going vertical. This is going to destroy bonds. People are going to run away from bonds with this large of a real negative rate. Then what happens next is people are going to rotate that money into something that, that preserves purchasing power. Precious metals, energy is going to do well. Um, they're all, it's all going to rotate, guys. It's all going to rotate. Here is uh, the Netherlands inflation rate. This is happening across the globe. Now, this is what is different. 1970s was contained to, the, to, to America. This here is global by nature. There isn't that much physical metals, guys. There isn't much out there. We are going to see shortages of these metals, period. Gold, silver, platinum does not matter. Is platinum a monetary metal? I don't think it matters. They're going to put their money in anything that preserves wealth, hard assets. So that, this is what's coming at least starting to come. It says, I'm starting to think that the next leg down in stocks could look like the 1987 crash. Liquidity is drying up. NASDAQ's about to break support. The Fed is not stepping in for now. A big gap down could be ahead of us. It could. It could, but it's not, it, I think the Fed is starting to realize they're starting to pivot. The bond market was starting to pivot today, 10-3. Uh, the bond market was, was starting to pivot. You could see the yields start to come down and we'll see what happens. That's what I'll say. We'll see what happens. This is crypto. Bitcoin's never seen repeated monthly closes below its four-year moving average. Uh, it could be dropping down, which then means that we could see a large decline in Bitcoin. But we'll see what happens. That's not my proje projection. Uh, I don't really have a, a, you know, I don't, I don't have a horse in this race, guys. It doesn't matter to me. Uh, Trader Ferg on the iron law of nature and energy return on investment. I do like his cheetah back here. Uh, that's part of the channel. Uh, it says, in the housing market, affordability is deteriorating rapidly as mortgage rates continue to surge. 
And that is something uh, that we're looking at. If, if interest rates continue to go up, affordability is slowing this market down. And we're going to have to wait and see what the data says for housing starts and what the data says for house prices and inventory. Inventory is still incredibly low, but we are seeing the seasonality also come out in the, in the housing market. And it's and it, the seasonality is a little bit accentuated, which means that we are seeing a little bit further pullbacks than what we would normally see in the markets. So that's one that I want to, I'm very curious on how this is all going to play out. If we see high rates of inflation, but this is this is what's different here, that I am changing my mind, not on the housing market, but on the drivers here. The inflation is coming from energy. It is not coming from an increase in credit expansion. That is a huge difference. So as we see this going through, we had the M2, we've had the credit expansion before. Now we're starting to see the M2 money supply come back down, but we still have problems in our energy, um, our energy markets. We're short on energy. So it's still going to be inflationary from a CPI standpoint, but we're not getting the M2 money growth. That is what's different here. And we'll have to see if that M2 money growth, if they, if they have to rotate differently there. Let's go with, the, uh, with your hypothesis. It says, now that we are at normal levels of the 90s and still drawing faster than ever, where do we go from here, wizard? <laughs> this is the US total crude oil inventory deviation from running 60 month average. You can see that we are eating through our inventories faster than any time in history, all the way back to at least 1950. And we are dramatically eating it through. Uh, that started in 2017. We saw the big dramatic move. This was the um, blip of the medical event. And then we're just game on huge deficits in our inventories for us and i and i keep going to the inventories here uh asian economy is beginning to ramp up as international flights cross the thousand mark for the first time since january flight data is one of the most reliable real-time predictor of a country's oil demand and three million barrels per day plus of added demand on the way as asian economies fully reopen and we can see this starting to turn higher for India, China, China especially. You can see that nice big move higher here. And then um, Japan. So they're opening up their economies. We can see that the flights are coming back and oil demand will be uh, moving up higher here. So that's what I've got for today, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Uh, if you guys want to know how to play these markets, uh, become a platinum member. Become a platinum member over here. Um, at the finding-value.com website. I can help you figure out how to play these markets. Um, again, it's just, you can see what I'm doing. It's not advice or anything like that. It's just what I'm doing in the markets. And you can see the companies that I'm looking at, uh, the companies that I'm choosing uh, are based off the fundamentals and the fractals in the technical charts. So it's it's a combination of those two things. I'm playing the long-term, not trading in and out of these things in the short term. So that's kind of my strategy. I'm, I'm going across what I think are the best companies in the world. Uh, I'm focused in certain areas that can grow their production and export it around the world, which I think will be some of the most valuable oil in the future, uh, exportable oil that people want. Uh, so that's what I've got for today. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. Give me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and we'll catch you next time. This is Finding Value.